Hello class. Now thank you for watching part B of lesson 1.5, polynomial functions and complex zeros. In this part of our of topic 1.5, we're going to discuss polynomial inequalities. And what we can learn to do is determine when a polynomial is above the x-axis positive or below the x-axis axis negative. Now when we write f of x, remember that I'm referring to, or we are all referring to, are the y values of the graph. So therefore, if f of x is greater than 0, that means that we're looking for when the function, all of the y values, are above the x-axis. And if f of x is less than 0, we're saying that y is less than 0, so it's a negative number, which means that the graph of this function is going to be below the x-axis. So if we look at this graph uh, here, let's consider this function f of, e f of x as above. If we want to find, first of all, when does the function equal to 0, we're asking ourselves, when are the y values equal to 0? Well, that occurs on the x-intercept. So that's going to be here, here, and right there. So x, is x will equal to negative 3, negative 1, and positive 3. For part b, we're asked to find where does the function, where is the function greater than 0? Well, to be greater than 0, that means that our function is going to be above the x-axis. So like for example, this part right here, the y values here are positive. They're above the x-axis. These y values here are also positive hence above the x-axis. So the interval so the interval where our function is going to be above the x-axis is from negative 3 to negative 1 and this is going to be exclusive uh, we're going to exclude the endpoints of negative 3 and negative 1 because we only want it to be strictly greater than as it's indicated right here. So we're going to use our parentheses and from positive 3 to positive infinity. So this is where our function is above the x-axis. Now when is our function below the x-axis? Hence, when is f of x less than or equal to 0? So this here, and let me highlight this instead in blue. Since I highlighted in blue, let me highlight this in blue. Blue. There you go. Blue. All right. So when is this going to be greater than, I'm sorry, less than or equal to 0? Okay. Well, less than or equal to 0 is below the x-axis, so that's all of this portion right here. Including, because it's also equal to 0, that's it's also going to include, again, these red endpoints as well. So we're below the x-axis from negative infinity... from negative infinity to negative 3. But because we're including that red endpoint, we're going to use a bracket to indicate that. And we're also below the x-axis from negative 1 to positive 3. But again, because of the equal sign, we're going to include those endpoints, so we're going to use brackets as well. So this is where our function is below the x-axis. Let's move now to the back. Let's look at the back of this. And let's look at how we do this algebraically without looking at a graph. So solving nonlinear inequalities, again polynomials, we start by first solving the function of f of x is equal to 0. So we look for when the function is equal to 0. Then we create what's called a sign chart with the solutions from step 1. And then we're going to test values in each of those, in each of those, uh, intervals to see if the value is going to be a positive number or a negative number and if we uh, positive or negative number and then we interpret the sign chart to answer the given inequality from the problem now we don't really have to test every single interval if we understand again multiplicity and make our connections about multiplicity and understand that uh, with an even multiplicity our graph is going to be tangent at the location that the graph is not going to move above or be um, move above or below that as zero. 
so we can make that connection and, and use that shortcut in order to do that. But again, you don't have to. You can test every single interval and see if it's going to be positive or negative. But there will be some situations where it will probably be easier just to use the fact that we know that our graph is going to be tangent at a specific point and therefore the graph is not going to move across the uh, the zero, not move across the x-intercept. So let's look at an example of this, all right? So the first thing we want to do is figure out our zeros. Where is our function? Where is f of x going to equal to zero? Well, to figure that out, we just simply get each factor, set it equal to zero, and then solve the equation. So x minus 3 is equal to 0 when x is equal to positive 3. x plus 1 is equal to 0 when x equals negative 1. x plus 1, I'm sorry, x plus 1. x plus 1 is equal to 0 when x equals to negative 1. And x plus 4 equals 0 when x equals negative 4. Now the multiplicity for each one of these is 1. So they all have a multiplicity of 1. So all have an odd multiplicity, which means that our function is going to cross the x-axis at each of those zeros. So without drawing a y-axis, we're just going to draw an x-axis from negative infinity to positive infinity. We're going to write our values in order from least to greatest, negative 4, negative 1, and positive 3. Now, like I said, since these are our zeros, this is where we're crossing the x-axis, okay? Our function is going to, again, uh, cross at each one of those values, okay? So let's start with the very far left, okay? We'll go from the very far left to get an idea of what's happening here. And I know we're supposed to do positive and negative, and I'll do that in a second, but look. So the way we determine if our graph is going to be above or below the x-axis, remember, that simply applies to the idea that the y values will either be positive if it's above or negative if it's below. So let's look at what's happening here. So our function, we're going to look at a value that is less than negative 4. Let's do negative 5. So if I plug in negative 5 for x, replace this with negative 5, replace this x with negative 5 and replace this with negative 5. Negative 5 minus 3 is negative 8. Negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4. And negative 5 plus 4 is negative 1. Now we don't care about what the actual value is. Well, all we care really is about the sign. So a negative times a negative is positive and a positive times a negative is going to equal to a negative value. So when I plug in neg uh, when I plug in negative five, when I plug in negative five on this number right here, I get that the y value is going to be negative. So that means that our graph has to be down here. So our function, and I'm just going to draw a sketch of this using my highlighter. Our function is going to go up because it has to be below, and it's going to go to my x-intercept. Now, because the multiplicity, again, are odd, we're crossing at each one of those red dots. So we're going to go above, and then obviously we have to reach our x-intercept, so we're going to go to our x-intercept. And again, because the multiplicity is odd, we're going to cross the x-axis at that location. We're going to move down, and we're going to go up. We're going to cross the x-axis at that location, and then we're going to move back up. So in this first interval, our function is going to be negative, in the second interval, our function is positive. And let me do them in blue for positive. In the third interval, our function is below our x-axis, so that our function is negative. And because on the fourth interval, it's above the x-axis, that means our function is positive. Okay? Now, again, you can test each one of these, but I'm trying to make it again, you make the connection of how multiplicity can help us figure out the sign of these things by knowing that at these, since our multiplicity are odd, since all of these are being raised to the first power, each of these factors, let me erase this, since each one of these factors is raised to the first power, an odd number, then that's going to tell us again 
that we're intersecting the x-axis at those locations. So it's going to change from above to below and below to above and vice versa at each one of those locations. So we don't have to test each one. We could only test one and then just know that it's going to alternate as a result. But if you want to test it, you can more than welcome to test. For example, this one right here, I'm saying it's going to be negative because of the alternating value. And let's look. Between negative 1 and 3, the number 0 is there. So if I replace all of the x's with 0, 0, 0, and 0, we get a negative number in the first parentheses. We get a positive number in the second parentheses. And we end up with a positive number in the third parentheses. So a positive times a positive is positive, and a positive times a negative is negative. So we end up with a negative value, which again, I told you was going to happen because of that alternating fact. Okay. So our graph is going to look like this. Well, now to go back and answer our question. When is our function positive? In other words, when is it above the x-axis? Well, it's above the x-axis from negative 4 to negative 1 and from 3 to infinity. And because it does not have the equal sign, we do not include, we do not include the, in, uh, the endpoints. And we're going to use our parentheses as our uh, indicating that these values are excluded. So I exclusive endpoints. Now let's look at example number five here. So the same situation here. Here, we have two values for our two zeros. Our two zeros are negative two, but negative two has a multiplicity of two, and x is equal to positive five, where the multiplicity for that one is one. Now, recall that having an even multiplicity means that our graph is going to be tangent at that location. So f of x is tangent at x equals negative 2, which means the following that, and I'll draw just a sketch of this, and I'm going to erase this, so I wouldn't recommend you drawing this unless you want to, okay? At negative 2, at this value of negative 2, the graph is going to be tangent. So if the graph is above, if the graph is positive before negative 2, when we get to negative 2, it's only going to touch there and turn around and become tangent. So let me curve it a little bit more. And tangent. So you see... Before negative 2, it's above the x-axis, and because we're tangent at negative 2, after negative 2, it's still going to be tangent at a, as a result. Now, if our graph was from below the x-axis, again, because it's going to be tangent, when we get to negative 2, it's just simply going to touch and then turn around. So we know that the interval before negative 2 and the interval um, ending at negative 2, which is the one on the left, and the interval starting at negative 2 are going to have the exact same sign. So we can use that fact in order to determine what the sign for these are going to be, whether we're going to be above or below. Okay? So let's see. Let's see what, and like I said, I'm going to erase this, and let's see what that value is going to be. So we're going to draw a number line from negative to positive infinity, we have two zeros, we have one at negative two, and we have one at positive five. And I know, like I said, my point wasn't correct because I drew my uh, negative two on the right side of zero, okay? So like I said, I wouldn't recommend you copying that previous graph. Yeah, because look, let me go back. Yeah, my graph was wrong. Negative two is obviously not on this side of my number line, okay? So, like I said, it was just, again, an idea of trying to explain, more importantly, tangent. So let's look at this. So negative 2 and 5. And again, I'm going to highlight this because this right here, our function is going to be tangent right there, okay? So let's remember that f of x is tangent at that location. So let's see. Let's figure out the middle sign first, okay? 
at the middle sign, we know that 0 is in between negative 2 and 5. So let's plug in 0 in for x. So 0 and 0. So this is going to be 2. And remember, this is a total of 2. So we have, and let me actually write that first. We have 0 plus 2. So that's going to be positive. And because there's a second one, because of the second power, we know that there's another positive value. So we have to include that one there, okay? And then when I do 0 minus 5, that's going to be a negative number. So multiplying a positive with a positive is positive, and multiplying with a positive with a negative is going to be, multiplying these two is going to give me positive. And then multiplying that positive number with this negative is going to be negative. So this right here is going to be negative. So it's going to be below the x-axis. Okay? So our graph will be down here. This portion of the graph is going to be down here. Okay? Now again, because it's tangent and negative 2, remember, that means that it's going to not cross. It's going to just simply turn around. It's going to bounce off. So we're still going to be below the x-axis even before negative 2. So between negative 2 and 5, we're below the x-axis. And before negative 2, we're still going to be below the x-axis in order to be tangent at negative 2. Now at 5, it's not going to be tangent since our multiplicity is 1, where f is going to intersect and uh, cross the x-axis. f of x crosses the x-axis at that value at x is equal to 5. So since our graph is below, we're going to cross the x-axis and move the graph above. So the graph is going to move above the x-axis and that means that the function is going to be positive right here. And over here it's going to be negative. Now to verify this, to be sure and double check our work, Let's plug in numbers, okay? So let's plug in a number. Let's plug in a number from this interval right here. So a number greater than 6. Let's plug in 10. So if I plug in 10, 10 plus 2 is going to be 12. So that's going to be a positive number. And again, because of the second power, that means that there's two positives right there. So just to be sure again that we do not forget about that. Now when I plug in 10 right here, 10 minus 5 is positive 5, so we have another positive number. So multiplying positive times positive times positive is going to be positive. Okay? So there you go. Now to verify that this is going to be negative, using again this technique and substituting in values, let's plug in now in a number that is less than negative 2. Let's plug in negative 10. So negative 10. Now, negative 10 plus 2, that is equal to negative 8. So that's going to be a negative number. Uh, but again, there's going to be two of those. And negative uh, 10 minus 5 is also a negative number. So don't forget again, the multiplicity again tells you how many t uh, negatives you have right there. So don't forget about that, okay? The reason I'm writing two of these is because again, we have this to the second power. This is being raised to the second power. So this is negative eight times negative eight. But like I said, we don't care, care about the number, we just care about the sign. So negative times negative is positive. And then that positive times the negative is going to equal to a negative value. So as you see right there, negative. But again, what I want you to be able to use, again, is prior knowledge and make the connection that the multiplicity, again, correlates to when the graph is going to stay either above or below the x-axis at that zero. Okay? All right, let's see. Let's do some more examples from our homework for today. So let's go to our homework. I won't do any of these, numbers one through four. If we need to check them, we'll check them during class tomorrow. And let's do some of these problems right here, okay? 
let's do specifically let's see let's do number eight number eight looks interesting right here okay so first to find the zeros remember all we do is look at the factors we have two factors here we have this factor and then this factor we want to see what makes each of those equal to zero recall from what we talked about in today's class that this first factor this is the equivalency of negative seven parentheses x minus zero to the second power because there is no parentheses around the x that's because we're subtracting zero so that means that x is equal to zero and our multiplicity is going to be our multiplicity is two and for the second factor x is equal to negative four and the multiplicity again is also two because of this because of uh, because of this even multiplicity this implies that our function f f of x is tangent at x is equal to zero and f of x is tangent at x is equal to x equals two so let's draw the number line underneath so from negative infinity to positive infinity I'm gonna make the two zeros green so we have a zero at negative four and a zero at zero so that means again that the graph is always going to be above or below the x-axis because it's tangent if it's tangent again remember we're going to approach the zero and it's going to turn around bounce off and we're going to approach the other zero turn around and bounce off so if this interval is positive then all the other intervals are going to be positive and vice versa if this interval right here is positive negative then because the graph is going to be tangent at those zeros we're never going to cross the x-axis we're always going to stay below the x-axis if this interval is negative so we don't really have to like I said we don't really have to test all of them all I have to do is just simply test one of them and because of the um, multiplicity of these zeros we know that all the other ones are going to stay the same so let's see let's try let's plug in a negative you know, let's plug in a positive number. Let's do something over here on this side. Okay. Let's pick something over here on this side. Let's pick 10. Okay, let's pick 10. So our negative 7. Our 10 is positive, so we're going to have a positive value. And remember, we have two of those because of this. So if this is 10. That's going to be a positive 10 and a positive 10, and we have that negative 7 right there. We can't forget that. And now if I plug in a 10 here, 10 plus 4, that's going to be a positive 14. So we have a positive value. And again, because there's another one, there's a second to the second, there's going to be another positive 14, so another plus sign. So let's see what sign we get. Well a negative times a positive is going to be negative a negative times a positive is negative and then that negative times this positive is going to be negative and then that negative times this last positive is going to be negative well if I multiply all of these let me just why not I, I, don't, I don't know why I didn't think about this to begin with if I multiply all of these positives that's going to be positive so this negative number times this positive number again multiplying all of this is going to make all of that positive is going to end up giving me a negative value so in this section here in this section right here that's going to be a negative value and because it's tangent at these locations that means that the graph never crosses the x-axis and it's not going to alternate there's no alternating between going above and below because those two zeros are going to be tangent and the graph will look like this and let's look at that okay
so let's look at this let's graph this let's see what this graph actually looks like and let's see if mm, this is if I'm correct so let's graph the function let's put negative 7 x to the second power parentheses where are they here we go x plus 4 to the second power again and let's graph it let's plot the graph all right let's change our okay let's see more of this graph so let's change the axis let's make the ax x axis go from let's say negative 6 to positive 6 and let's make the y axis go from no that seems to be fine that's fine no it's probably too far off let's change again the axis so we can see a better graph let's change the y-axis let's go from negative uh, let's go from negative 10 to positive 10 a little bit closer in okay and there uh, look look how the graph is below the x-axis everywhere and if I zoom out more let me pick a better y value a smaller y value let's say that the y value is negative 100 negative a thousand and there look as you can clearly see the graph like I said all the graph is always below the x-axis every single time always below the x-axis so below below like I said or if it was above it would be above above and above so there you have it so our graph is always above the x-axis now the question is asking again I'm sorry it's always below the x-axis so when is our graph above the x-axis well never there is never a point in the graph that is going to be above the x-axis they're all negative and we're looking for positive so this one would be none so like I said never none so we're gonna write never in this situation here since it's never gonna be above the x-axis okay all right well there you have it this uh, if we have more questions I'll work on some more examples of this uh, during class for any questions that you do have I did do several of the examples already like examples back here 17 and 19 okay during class today but if you have any more questions again send me a message through email and like always I appreciate you watching and I hope you have a great day goodbye